episode 174, the pub is finally back open. I'm sorry the pub had to close for renovations. But here's how I feel. Baby cat, you come over here. Here's how I feel about the last three weeks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry I had to postpone a couple shows. Um, it's uh, it's the old people again. It's my dad. Um, this time, um, they said um, he's not going to make it. There's a window of seven to ten days, give or take, either three on either side. Okay, well that's not good. Yep, but better get everything in order. But people are sending pictures, you know, for. Well, if this happens, we've got to have a big Irish wake, and we need, what, bar, what bars are we going to? Well, he <laughs> they didn't even come close to that. Um, he's now awake and um, uh, took away all his medicine. It's made no difference. Right. Kind of makes me wonder if he's really been taking it right. ever for the last five years. Um, but, you know, it's the over 80 crowd. Do they take their meds or not? I don't know. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's not fine. But is it? I want a McDonald's shake. Can somebody please go get me? It's terrible when the lady at McDonald's knows my order. Hi, <laughs> Kathleen. Hi. Do you want two shakes for your dad? Yeah, he has one in the morning and one at night. Thanks. I'll put it in the mini fridge. <laughs> so I don't even know where where we're at. I don't know. I I should do an ad for McDonald's though. Um, you know, everybody wants to call it a piece of shit. Yeah. Well, he, f f he is being fueled by chocolate shakes and the biscuit of the sausage. Biscuit, not the sausage. No. Can't get that down. No, but the shakes. Yeah. Uh, down in the Ozarks, there's frozen custard called Andy's and Randy's. Either uh -huh. one of those will do. It's got chocolate, hot fudge, and caramel. And, you know, turn on the cardinals. This is not a dead person. No. This is, we're, no, 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 no. And then they all go, well, you know. Some people, when taking off other meds, they actually rally. I go, right, but does it rally implies to me a short spike in greatness. Mm -hmm. I rallied. Mm -hmm. This is 21 days. <laughs> when the Cardinals rally, we get out of rally towels and yeah. yay, we had a good inning. It, if you have nine innings in a row of greatness, that's not a rally. No. This is 21 days now. You know, uh -huh. I don't know. All I know is a lot of you are going through versions of this, so I appreciate all the emails. I hate canceling shows. I've never done it in my life. Nope. I don't postpone them. I don't do anything. Well, so if you're, if you're told five days, you know, dive, I, I we're I, honestly packing like clothes for a wake. Like, and now I'm like, oh, well, I'm out of sweatpants. Well, shit, I'm out of underwear. He's like not fine, but nothing like what they said. No, no, no. he's you know. Well, why, why, why aren't you at your shows? Cause of you, Dad. <laughs> Well, you should get to work. That's all he wants is everybody to go to work. Mm -hmm. But he tells my younger brother the most, get to work. And I said, do you notice um, he never has to say that to me? No. Because he knows I work my ass <laughs> off. He does wonder why I'm not at my show, but he doesn't tell me to work more. Right. Just saying, Pat, maybe there's a pattern. Oh! oh! <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. And when the medical people go, well, you know, it's all in God's hands. Well, I can say that also. Yes. I know that. I was hoping you, because you see these people every day, mm -hmm. and people like him could have a little more insight, but we're just going to leave it up to the gods, the gods. of Valhalla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we made him a Viking. <laughs> <laughs> I totally made him a Viking. Well, I wished I was a Viking during the eclipse. Like, I don't understand all that. I don't even care. I would have been so much better as, like, a Native American or a Druid or a Viking where I just go, I don't know. The gods are mad. Everything's dark. Well, fuck. Oh, it's light again. Yay, the gods are happy. Yay. Let's do a moon dance. Okay, yeah. I don't, yeah. Because what's the difference? But anyway, that's the update. And uh, I'm going to do everything I can to keep this schedule normal. I can't, you know, I don't know what. We're doing I'm doing everything I need to do, and then some, and um, I've lost all my friends. <laughs> I've lost all my, my golf buddies. I'm not your friend. They don't even check in anymore. No. They just assume I'm not around, and yeah. they'll be back. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't text me either because no. I'm probably not coming. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be sitting here watching the Cardinal game with Jack, who wasn't supposed to be alive right now. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> And then every time Your I won't, every time the one player, I won't say which player because it would be mean, but every time the one player um, gets up to bat, I hate that guy. Look up his contract. Look up his contract. How much longer? <laughs> three years dead. He was signed for three years. <laughs> anyway, 
All right, let's move it on. That's the update. Thanks for everybody who did keep their tickets. If you couldn't and you have other stuff to do, I totally get that. No big deal. You should. I don't know the ins and outs of all the refunds, blah, blah, blah. Um, but what I will say, because there have been some emails that have been forwarded to me, if you're going to buy tickets to my shows, just go to my website because yep. that's the link to the actual seller. Yep. It is amazing to me. Even, even people in my own family. Uh -huh. My mom goes, your Aunt Julie said your tickets in Austin are $480. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Good well, job. Mom, I'm just going to guess Aunt Julie went to a crazy resale site. Yep. But it is confusing because if you Google like your name or even when I do it for other people I want to go see, the first ones that come up are, are resale sites. It's yeah. not my website, and yeah. it's not Ticketmaster. Yeah. It's not wherever I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's jacked up stuff, and right. then people click on it, and then you I can't probably should get a refund with all that. I don't even, if you go off site, I can't make, I can't keep the promises I'm trying to keep. So if you, and I'm not trying to plug my website. I'm just saying that has the link. It's very nice. To the, it is a very nice it's website. Very nice. I think it's very modern. It was redesigned yeah. last year. I helped with a lot of that. Nice. Um, anyway. Uh, here's the work announcements, 2022, 2024 fall tour announcement is going to be next Monday, April 15th. So it's a little something happy on tax day. Yay. 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 And the cities, it's going to be great. The fall has awesome cities mm -hmm. and a couple, I'm just going to say are very far North. Yay. <laughs> a couple are very far in the North. Um, beyond the wall. I'm going beyond the wall to the north. Um, to my people. The pre-sale. So I'll announce the cities on Monday, yep. and you get excited. Mm -hmm. Wednesday is the pre-sale. Yep. The code will be potluck. Mm -hmm. For some of you older termites, it doesn't cost any money. Mm -hmm. I know that's confusing. Sometimes <laughs> it confuses me. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also confusing sometimes because then the venues will put up a different code just put a yeah. code in it whatever uh -huh. put in ours or whatever theirs does um and then friday that friday it all happens in that week wednesday's pre-sale friday's on sale boom 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 boom. Mm -hmm. so very and then the upcoming shows heading to detroit for two shows in royal oak wah, wah. Boom. this weekend ah. um then tarrytown wilmington delaware anaheim california I've got a lot of friends coming to that one. Very mm -hmm. excited. Yeah. Thousand Oaks. I have some pals coming to that one too. I'm going to do Bert Kreischer's wife's podcast. Nice. Yeah. Lean in. Cool. <laughs> and then Bert was like, well, why aren't you doing mine? I'm like, she asked first. <laughs> That's exactly why, Bert. Why don't you get on it, chubby bubby? And, uh, <laughs> and my friend Greg Fitzsimmons, I'm going to do his podcast uh -huh. out in LA. Fitz Dog, I think it's called. Um, and I'm going to be on KTLA in the morning. Boom. Los Angeles. I actually, it's the only morning show probably in the country that I enjoyed. I mean, watching as a, as a human being that lives, that lived in LA. And yeah. I'm like, they're a fun group. I yeah. liked them. Yeah. And most morning things are like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. You're cooking. Yeah. I got to cook some shit or, you know, it's, do you have anything wacky? No, I'm not a clown. No, it's I, six I, in the morning. It's right. Uh, yeah. Um, and the older I get, I have to get up like seven hours earlier for makeup. Yes. I'm like, oh, can the makeup lady come at midnight? I'll just sit here like this <laughs> with makeup on. Um, then West Hampton, New York. That's my. That's where I'm in the Hamptons, like a rich person in the summer. I'll be summering for one day in the Hamptons. <laughs> and then I'll be in the Ozarks, which is not exactly the Hamptons. Uh, Charlestown, West Virginia. Boom, I love that casino. Portland, Maine. Love it. Borgata. Love it. And added a show nice. at the Borgata. Yep. There's now a Saturday show, Termites, because yep. Friday sold out. Mm -hmm. So, boom, we're on a roll. San Antonio, Texas, uh, Austin, Texas. It's going to be hot. You should come inside. Marietta, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, Niagara Falls, Ontario. That's Hi. August 10th. Yep. And Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. So uh, there you go. Moving on. What are we drinking in honor of what? Masters Week. Happy Masters Week. It's Calamity Jane, the beer of the PGA, the Georgia selection. Nice. Normally, I like to go to a practice round with my friend Little Dorfman or my friend Ron White, but that was not in the cards um, this time. But I'm very excited to be able to watch it. Yeah. Very excited. Um, the Masters to me is like better than the Super Bowl. Way better. Oh, yeah. Way better. Yeah. Because it's four days mm -hmm. and it's just, I just love everything about it, even though, um, you know, 
it's those masters people that well refer to my old jokes. Well, you, you know, yeah, yeah we'll about? find my old joke. Yeah, yeah we got to maybe um, politically correct that a little bit. It yeah. was quite some time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could get probably cancel that anymore. I don't know. Um, um, and then what are we going to try? Well, this made me laugh because these, um, the somebody, I, I have never been to Epcot. In, oh well, God. well, maybe I was there. I don't know. I'm not a Disney person. Oh. I mean, I'll take kids if, if I know them and I have to, but, um, you, these, I guess you go into China world and these late, China. they have late, has Each country has its world, it's right? They're called. World. This is China. Oh, I thought they called them worlds. No, the world no? Of China, no, the world of China. Yeah, why not? Well, it's Chinese writing all over these latest potato chips, so I don't know what flavor, but it has a picture of a beer on it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so, let's see if. The, oh, okay. We're already starting off wrong. Lays aren't supposed to have ridges. <laughs> That's not right. Maybe the Chinese like them. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! No. Holy shit. Oh my God, that tasted like perfume. What the Christ? Oh my God. Perfumed lace. That's what I, yeah, it's like they dumped it in Chanel number no. five. Oh, oh my God. Uh, okay. well, what, stuffed snacks? What are these? Anything. Combos. Combos, stuffed snacks, ranch dip. Oh, there's ranch inside this pretzel. Yeah. I don't know. Is it better than the perfume chips? It's better than the perfume chips, but it also weighs like 87 pounds. I mean, it's just fat in a bag. <laughs> now, there's just no reason to fuck up a pretzel or the no. ranch. No. no. Okay. Hard, okay. Hard um, but, uh, oh, these are the breakfast flavor. These are, that it was Antoinette and Roberta that got from Orlando that went to and got the, the packaging is cool, but holy Christ. Did you guys taste them, Roberta? <laughs> and Antoinette, holy shit. It's like I ate perfume. This is going to take a hot minute to get rid of this. And maybe seven more beers. Holy. Oh, my God. We have a lot. These lay, these are IHOP breakfast flavored. They're bacon with, with syrup and pancakes with syrup and bacon. These are from Cindy and Todd. Thank you, Cindy and Todd. Breakfast potatoes. I know. I don't even know how you pass this at the meeting when they go, do we have any ideas for flavors? How about pancakes <laughs> on a potato chip? No, Kathleen, you're fired. You're fired for even saying that out loud. Oh, okay. Well, really? yeah, it's not my thing. I wouldn't ruin a bag of Lay's like this, but if you like strawberry pancakes, they nailed it. Strawberry. It tastes like strawberry pancakes. No way. Yeah. Bacon? I don't taste bacon. No. Not at all. No. I only taste pancakes. Kids would love these. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It's not my thing, but. Oh. We can get them with a McDonald's shake. God. How much money do they spend on new flavors? Millions, Scotty. Millions. Yeah. And then, you know, who's going to, first of all, I bought it to try, or got that. Somebody sent it mm -hmm. to me. But would you buy it if you're hungry? I don't. No, it's a backup one. It doesn't seem like enough. Um, all right, we're moving on. So many things. So many things. Just as a suggestion, this came to the uh, team email, and then I, I go through that or I get to whatever, whatever. Um, this person wrote a very nice email, um, Carmen, um, about a show, in case you guys want a show, called Files of the Unexplained on Netflix. She cool. thinks it's very interesting. A little bit, it was a little slow out of the gate, but you got to... First one's about aliens. The next, they have one about creepy dolls. They have one about Lake oh. Lanier. So it's all the stuff that we've talked about on the podcast. Um, we haven't talked about those those feet that wash ashore in Canada with a shoe on it, just yeah. the foot. And then she wrote, what is Paddles doing up there? Exactly. Maybe, <laughs> why don't you get to the bottom of that one? I've been a little it's busy. your nation. I had to watch your cats. Yeah, they're not happy with me. No. Well, they shouldn't be. It's ridiculous. But you know what? That's what, when you show up like a squatter with no parents and just plop yourself on the front porch, you take what you can get. Exactly. That's right. And I'm now. excited for them because the cicadas are coming, and it's just going to be a feast. <laughs> Trillions of cicadas. Right. Chapel will be in his glory, yeah. just eating one after another. It's you gonna won't be, have to feed him at all. It's going to be a magnificent summer for no. cats. 
Well, not the whole summer. I think it only lasts to like the middle of June. Um, King and Queen news. Um, Jelly Roll was wonderful at the CMT Awards. It was um, uh, Sunday night, if you didn't get to see that. He's just a wonderful person. I love everything about him. And his plane had to make an emergency landing, but everything was fine. Uh-huh. I didn't really read the whole story why, but he's he's on a big roll. Cher, we haven't heard anything about Cher in a hot minute. Nope. Well, her and her boyfriend, Alexander Edwards, had a glam date night at the Dolce and Gabbana exhibition in Milan. Oh. They were all dressed up. Um, she's 77. It doesn't say how old this child is. Um, <laughs> he's 38. Go for you, as Rocket the Port would say. Go for you, Cher. You go out and cougar. Wow. Go get him. The guys do it. Why can't we? Um, she looked great. There's some other people that were there were uh, Demi Moore and Naomi Campbell. I've, I can't remember if I've been to Milan. I don't think so. It's fun. I was in Florence once with my mom Florence and the better. neighbor. Oh, my God. That's a story, too, if you've never. Um, put in the notes. Queen News. Dolly Parton has surpassed 20 million monthly listeners on Spotify since the release of Cowboy Card. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she ain't stupid. No, no, no. Let her sing it. Who cares? Let her rewrite it. Who gives a shit? Right. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Yep. And I like the new version. And I like, I, I don't know. I don't. Why? You don't like it? Well, it is a classic. Well, it's also she updated the lyrics so that the woman doesn't sound so passive. But when Dolly wrote it, you know, women, we didn't couldn't have credit cards. We couldn't buy property. We couldn't do anything. So you did not want to lose your man. And that's my meal ticket. Mm -hmm. So, hey, Jolene at the bank, Mm -hmm. back the fuck off. (laughs) Okay, you're prettier than me. We know it. We know it. You're you have a job, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, But what I do know is Dolly's making just money hand over fist and good for her because she'll do something good with it yep she'll go give it right on out put some more kids through college out there working at dollywood Mm -hmm. uh taylor swift oh the women are just bringing it tay 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 -tay is officially declared a billionaire boom on the 2024 forbes list um uh yeah uh so another newcomer magic johnson Good for him. Yeah. There's that guy. Um, a lot of people wouldn't have no reason to know this, but in Los Angeles, in uh, very near Compton, which has a reputation of not being mm-hmm. exactly a hundred percent safe. What's the show? What's Boys the in the Hood? Boys in the Hood. Yeah. Um, Magic wanted to, to create a whole street of good stuff, like a Home Depot stuff that wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Red Lobster. Blah, blah, blah. And all, you know, Starbucks, all that shit. Well, none of the banks would give him money because they always use the um, the the demographics as the reason not to give you the money. They, oh, well, we only put a Home Depot if there's this many people in the area that make this median income, blah, blah, blah. So he said, well, what if I put up the collateral right. for the loans? Mm-hmm. And they, they were like, okay, but mm-hmm. blah, blah. Well, he did. And he built it. And it's wonderful. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to take the bull by the horns. Mm-hmm. Go for him. You don't, uh, he's done all kinds of business things. Um, there's no no other newcomers. Um, uh, that's about it. Her and um, Travis yep. were in Nashville. Yeah, um, for Easter. For Easter, for like a secret hideaway weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but over there in Hendersonville, which is pff, over there across the lake. <laughs> you can throw it. You're rocking. <laughs> I live on the old people, Mexican, hippie side of the lake. Nice. The other side of the lake is for families. I thought about moving over. I thought about building a house over there. And then one day me and my friend Brian drove there and all I saw was soccer field, soccer field, soccer field, soccer field. And I went, I know where where, I need the weird people. (laughs) I'm not a fan. I don't have all this. I don't want to be in the. The TJ Maxx parking lot with 7,000 cars. No. It's just strip mall, strip mall, strip mall. I'm like, no. And then I found this side where there's no rules and it's just old people yeah. and all the Guatemalan guys. Yeah. Those are my little pals. This is the ramshackle side, which I prefer. Yes. Anyway, um, I think that's all my queen news. Snoop! 
Snoop's not there. Oh, Snoop's going to do the Olympics. Yes. Yes, it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. He played a little volleyball in studio and kind of crushed some people. I'm like, maybe we could sign him. I mean, he's old, <laughs> but he's really tall. I forget how tall he is. Uh -huh. um, Jelly and Stevie. Stevie's just out on the road. She's causing no racket, no problems, yeah. doing her job night after night after night. I watch yeah. every clip on Instagram. She's out there killing it, adding shows. Mm -hmm. She's going to be in London. This lady's never getting off the road. Nope. I need her to date Louis Black. <laughs> I don't know how I make that happen, but then I'm going to be like a four-year-old and go, you guys are the same age. This will work great. Can I come over for pancakes? <laughs> Lou, I'm going to point a way to get backstage at Stevie Nicks, and you're going to be on your best behavior. You're going to wear a shirt I tell you to wear. You're going to date her. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little out there, <laughs> but he loves out there, out there type yep. chicks. He loves the woo woo, as I call them, the woo woo people. The woo -woo She's the queen of the woo woos. <laughs> Get back there. Yeah, I remember being in the Haida Ashbury in San Francisco in 1974. She didn't have all the same memories as Lou. They could hippie out. Um, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Update. Oh my god. Oh my god. So. I have like three days in town before I have to leave again. And one of the days I was trying to get my friend Dorf because I want to go to Eric Church's new bar. Mm -hmm. And I always tell you about the new bars in Nashville. In case you ever come, you'll know everything. Yep. Eric Church, I don't even know what he sings. I, He's I, wonderful. Is he? I don't know a thing about him. But mm -hmm. um, uh, he built a six-story bar. Mm -hmm. It's got stained glass windows. More importantly, it has Carolina barbecue. On one yes. of the floors, my favorite. I should not say that being from St. Louis and Kansas City, I should stick with ours, but I like Carolina the best. Well, I was going to go down there, and then it didn't happen. Um, but I am going to go down there and give you guys an Instagram full review. Nice. In case you come to Nashville, come you know you. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, day drinking. Yeah. Not, I don't do the night. No. As soon as I see anyone under 30, I'm like, got to go. Oh, no, the children. Oh. Ah. <laughs> I have to be back out ah, by the lake. Get away. Um, so I was going to do all that. And then Morgan Wallen. Oh, no. I love him. I, I really, so I don't want to get in any debates about Morgan's behavior or about his, what he has done in the past. I, I don't, I don't get it. Want to get into all that. What I do know is I like his voice and I like his songs. Mm -hmm. I like that East Tennessee. He's got some grit in there. He mm -hmm. is a hill billet. Yeah. And I like it. Yep. Compared to a lot of the younger people, they all sound alike to me. He because sounds you different. Are a hill billet. I got a lot of hill billy. Mm -hmm. Also. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he's young. He's stupid sometimes. Very stupid. And uh, I bet Eric Church did not picture on a soft opening on a Sunday <laughs> night that there would be police and people being arrested because he threw a chair. You know what? Why do we have laws? We have laws because people do dumb shit. And now the new law, I guarantee you, is all outdoor furniture on up, up, up rooftops has to be bolted down. So mad. Did nobody ever think of that? No. And you can't serve glasses and glasses, beers and glass. It has to be plastic. Because some idiot's going to chuck a bottle over or a pint glass, and if that lands six stories... And then the environmentalists are going to get real pissed. Uh, they're going to get mad because it's plastic. Yes. When styrofoam, I'm sure, isn't good. I yeah. don't keep up. I'd have yeah. to ask my friend Amy Aquino. It, she's an earth beer. person. She knows all the rules to the earth. And what... I'm every time she comes to my house, she turns everything I have off into lower <laughs> settings and then takes all my good towels away and leaves some weird, like, rag thing. And I'm like, what the fuck is that, Amy? Where'd my stuff go? You don't understand how much water you're wasting, and you don't understand. I'm like, I'm never here. You didn't have children. No, I'm wasting water in Marriott's all across America. I'm leaving that shower running. God, that's all. I live in Marriott's. If you ever go into a Marriott, you'll see a portrait of two... Old white men, <laughs> one sitting down and one standing up. It's Bill Marriott Jr. and Bill Marriott Sr. It's their actual portrait. It's very old because I've been on the road for 100 years and that portrait has not changed. No. The one in the chair is probably dead by now. But in my mind, I pretend they're my gay grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> and I get all excited to see them. I'm like, yay, yay, here's my gay. Yeah, that's how well I know, feel I know them, though. They're like, I see pictures of them more than I've ever seen of my own grandparents. <laughs> I know they're Mormons. I know. Yeah. I'll never forget in Utah one time. I, 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 I said, um, is the bar still open? There was like a guy, a security guy by the elevator. It's only in Salt Lake. He goes, 
yes, the bar's still open. I go, great, I'm just going to grab a glass of wine and take it up anyway. So he heard me say that, mm -hmm. and I go and get it, and I go to the elevator, and I have my glass of wine to take up. He goes, you can't take that upstairs. I go, you just heard me yeah. say, why can't I take it upstairs? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the rule. You, you have to drink the alcohol in the lobby. It's a Salt in Lake. The mm -hmm. In the bar. And I, but the bar was closing. And I go, so you want me to shoot wine? Right. I only have five minutes left. Right. And he said, ma'am, I don't make the rules, blah, blah, blah. And then I thought, okay, I can't be that lady who gets in a fight with a security guard. <laughs> so I went and sat in the dark. Mm -hmm. Women are not allowed to talk in Salt Lake. <laughs> Salt Lake's <laughs> getting more, a little less weird. Like, they don't have those secret clubs where I had to pay some stranger $5 to get a, to be, to, get a license to go in the bar. And the, oh, the best way to do is if you smoked, and I smoked back then, just go to the smoking area. They'll all do it. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. They're, I'm like, I don't know anyone here. Can somebody sponsor me to go in there? All I want is a Bud Light. Like, right. how hard is this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's over, though. Um, but I'm going to do a full review on that bar. It just got sidetracked, and then Morgan, he does have a song. <laughs> this is how it goes. Last night we let the liquor talk. Can't remember everything we said, but we said it all. It now should be. Last night I let the liquor talk. Can't remember everything I threw, but I threw a lot. <laughs> Keep going with that, Morgan. Come on. It's free. That's a free idea. <laughs> You're now a country singer. Uh, update on musicians. I, I love that song. We let the liquor talk. Um, update on the musicians selling their rights. Mm -hmm. Kiss. So crazy. Pew, the band Kiss. They marked uh, 2023 was a bittersweet moment for the band. Having performed on countless stages over the last decade, they decided to disband after holding one last performance in New York City, which a lot of the Kiss fans were not impressed with. Really? No. I don't know anything. Was it makeup? Oh, they did all the makeup and stuff. Mm -hmm. They thought, the KISS fans thought that they would introduce, like, the next band that would be KISS. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't no. think they know Gene Simmons no. well enough. <laughs> yeah, that's what Gene Simmons would say is sharing his stage. <laughs> boy, oh, yo, 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 yo. You wouldn't even make it up that first rickety step on those bullshit <laughs> stages. This is about um, me. Uh, they've, sold, they've released 20 studio albums and sold over 75 million records worldwide. Which is weird because the, I think I've said it on the podcast before. Um, the my favorite song was their slow one. Beth, I hear you no. calling, Who has that but I can't song? come home right no, now. No, 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 no. What? That was a great song because me and the boys are playing. Yeah. That was the where you go get the beer. And I don't know. No, it wasn't. Yes. It's the only reason I went to the show. No. Well, I never even went. Truth be told. No. I I want to rock and roll all oh, night. I party every day. I was. For loving you. That was a good one. I was, yeah. Yes. All right. Anyway, yes. uh, they've sold their rights for three hundred million. I don't think that's enough. No. Especially because they have sold um, their likenesses. It's they sold it to Pop House. Our images, our music, and our personas is like anything. Here's the thing about Kiss people. Like, I never knew a diehard Kiss fan until I worked at the Washington, D.C. Improv. And the manager there was John. He was a great, is a great guy. Um, and he's obsessed with Kiss. And one night, I was, so the computers in the office, like, even on a Saturday in a club when we'd have two or sometimes three shows, most of the time, in between the shows, I was on some sort of eBay auction. <laughs> In the office, because eBay was new, yeah. and it was exciting, and I'm trying to get my sister sound and music dinner plates for a Christmas present, and I'm, you know, in, I have a joke about it, but um, he was com in a competing auction on a different computer for a Kiss coffin. They made... Oh, my God. Yeah. Costco. Co and then Costco yes, ended up selling yes. them years later. Um, but he was like... Oh yeah, baby, you can't believe all the kiss collect. They there there are people collect this stuff. Like Gene Simmons made it all. It's way different than say like the Eagles or Fleetwood Mac or these. I don't think three hundred million is enough. What about AI? Right. Yeah. That's what everybody says now. What well, AI? well, the the I always say that the black comics are way ahead of the white comics when it comes to um, what you should do business wise, mm -hmm. whether they do it or not. That's up to them. Mm -hmm. But one of my friends, and it's it's always a black guy. He's like, "You gotta get yourself an AI agent, baby." And I never even thought about that. I'm like, "Fuck, he's right." 
Like, instead of just letting people do it, get an agent and sell it. Like, get, make some money. They're going to steal it anyway. Might as well get money out of the hopper. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to fucking call on them on Monday. <laughs> I'll be the first one. Who's got me an AI agent? If I don't have an AI agent within 72 hours, I'm leaving. Back to Missouri. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, I just don't think 300 million is enough. No. I would, especially him. He's the king of business. I would have gone for, a, a, what's the difference? If they give you 300 million, they give you five. Maybe they're tired. They might be getting tired. They're, mm -hmm. they're the older turtles. They're, they're older turtles. Yeah. Turtles. Yeah. They're yeah. the senior turtles. It's a turtle um, mm -hmm. uh, Update. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures of a man believed to be Banksy. Somebody took his picture. What? At the site of a tree mural. Yes. New pictures have surfaced showing a man believed to be the elusive artist Banksy at the site of his latest mural. It's in London. And somebody, um, the man who has short hair and glasses can be seen climbing over a black railing because he realized he got caught. Oh. Like somebody caught him. The passerby who captured the picture said, I noticed a man in a black hoodie who seemed to have finished his work to hand over a box to an assistant in a gray checked flannel shirt with gray hair. Then he started to climb over the fence and I got feeling that it could be Banksy, a Banksy mural, and that that was Banksy himself. I quickly focused on taking pictures of him, and he looked at me with the expression to seem to say, I've been spotted. He quickly left the scene in a black van parked near the mural. Of course it's a black van. Well, you got to go get that license plate number. Oh. Come on now. Haven't we seen Dateline enough people to know how to keep moving on that? Nope. No. Well, at least he got his picture. If it's that Robert Guggenheim guy or whatever the guy's name is that they all say it's him, it's exactly what it is. He would probably look like, like mid-40s, mm -hmm. white guy, kind of a beard, kind of a shaved, like, crop haircut. Mid-40s white guy. That mid narrows it down in Britain. Mid-40s <laughs> white guy in London. Um, update! Maya! Our little crypto thief, not a fraudster, he's no, a fucking he's a thief. thief. Yeah, Sam Bankman fried speaks out of her, after his sentencing. 25 years in the pup up. But a federal thing, you can't get that reduced, but you can get extra credit for good behavior, which is what I'm sure Elizabeth Holmes, her 11-year sentence will turn into five, right. and his will turn into uh, mm -hmm. 11 years. And he's only, he's young, so it won't even be a big deal. By the time he gets out, he still won't even be an ARP member. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this is, what, this is what a narcissist, crazy person he is. Um, he's, he's saying from prison that the only way all of this can be straightened out and people can get their money back is if I'm not in prison. I just can't make that happen while I'm in prison. Stop. So if you would let me out of prison, right. I could really make this all right. And um, he doesn't think the people that are in charge of getting the people their money back, they are going to get their money back, but it's going to be a minute. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, he said, I never thought what I was doing was illegal, but I tried to hold myself to a high standard, and I certainly didn't meet that. So, oh, so you've set a standard for you. Right. Well, how about the one we've all set for everyone that's called the law? <laughs> right. The law. That's the law. You, you, oh, I didn't, you, you didn't it. think what you were doing was illegal? Right. Then why not just show them the books of when you took all the money that people like me would have sent? Mm -hmm. I picked a different exchange. I did not go with FTX. Even no. though they have big commercials and look fancy, I stuck with Coinbase. So far, so good. Right. Doesn't mean it all can't fall apart tomorrow. Are you saying you don't think Tommy Salami? I don't think Tom Brady, no. Do I think he knows about Bitcoin? Maybe. Probably as much as I do. But that's not enough no. to be endorsing things. Went up. Oh, wow. Hi. Oh, hi. Do you want to come up and say hi? Come here. No, man. Come here. Come here. We're doing a podcast. Baby cat. Come here. You want to say hi to the people? Come on. Come on. I don't have any. I have no treats. They're downstairs. All right. Moving on. Um, He said... Uh, he said he's remorseful, um, that he has seen the despair and frustration. Um, he said it's just excruciating waiting every day for people to get their money back. Um, <laughs> right, <asshole>. right. Um, <laughs> I'd give anything to help repair the damage. I'm doing what I can from prison, but it's deeply frustrating Stop not to be it. able to do more. That's right. Ridiculous. Hey, I, I burnt the whole house down. I can rebuild it if you'd let me out. Yeah. Just let me out. Mm -hmm. No. Um... Yeah, so that's what's going on there. I want his parents to be in trouble, too. I don't know when that's coming down the exactly. pipe. But it better come down. Update! I have a lot of updates. And, you know, I used to do a joke a long, long time ago. Um, when 
people frequently go, how was your flight? I'm here. I mean, <laughs> if I'm here, Hello. it was good. Mm -hmm. If I'm not here, there was a problem. Right. Right. Well, now I don't even feel that way. Now, I mean, there's just engine, Southwest Airlines, the engine cover flew off yeah, while, exactly. while they're taking off. Yeah. Um, Boeing. It had just been inspected. I know. God. It makes me laugh that the Boeing, uh, a United Airlines CEO said the incidents, because they got tires falling uh -huh. off and. Right. Uh, they need to fire their entire. Uh, a door space. panel fell off. Um, and. Uh, he said it's really time to sharpen their focus. What? Yep. <laughs> now, if you're the United CEO or the CEO of Boeing, I think he's getting fired. Yeah. Um, oh, no, he's, quote, stepping down. He's stepping down. Well, now would be a good time because if you don't, we're firing you. So right. you can call it whatever you want to call it. But, but I mean, if he steps down, how much of the, the parachute package does he get? Here's $40 million for being not being on top of it. Um, that's, that's why he's stepping down. I wouldn't want to be... The United CEO, when you have to come out um, and and say, what do you say? Look, a tire, so a tire fell off the plane, but here's the thing. You don't really need all the tires. <laughs> we can land with some tires. Those extra tires are just to make it more comfortable, more less like a, na like a military <laughs> thing. Um, tires are overrated. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just nothing you can say that's going to sound sensible. Um, and there's really, uh, that's the only update is that the United C CEO has said they're going to sharpen their focus. Oh my God. Right. I have other jokes about it, but you have to come see my show. For <laughs> <laughs> update. Uh, update. So remember the billionaire lady, Kathy Cargill of yes. Cargill feed, seed, mm -hmm. grain in the Midwest. You see Cargill everywhere. I don't know if it goes beyond the Midwest, uh, our area, but oh, no. it's an enormous, um, yeah, it's it's, and it's easy to confuse with Carhartt, which is more yes. like they got the cool clothes and all that, not they, Cargill. They, no, that's completely different, actually. But Carhartt are like work clothes. Carhartt or work yeah. clothes, yeah. yeah. Or super warm clothes. Yeah, I have a pair warm. to go to Titans games, yeah. and they're super cute. Yeah. Yeah, and boy, am I warm. You could put, like, another pair of legs in my legs, though. It's very large, and it's an extra small. I'm like, maybe I should have went to a kid's. I should have went to a kid. I should have went to a child's large. Right. Um, so this is, a, this is crazy, and this is a thing of mine. This is where I know I'm turning into an old person. Well, I know I'm turning into an old person because every time I pass mattress firm, I'm like, that's a front. I don't know what the fuck's going on in there, but I never see a car there. No, no one's buying mattresses. And then that's the kind of friend. thing that old people would go, hey, you know what I was thinking about today? And young people are like, why would you even think about that? Because it's suspicious. Yeah. That's why. Yep. I have a problem with billionaires buying up all of the land in one area that's awesome. I don't know how you stop it. You can't. Well, HOAs would stop it, but they'll just find a way. They'll put it in an LLC. LLC. They'll find a way. Yeah. Uh, but this is about Kathy Cargill. Oh. She's the one who bought all the property up in uh, Minnesota, Beauty. and she's buying, and she is not nice. She doesn't seem nice. No. No. no, no, no. But the locals, you know, say you have a your second, your little lake house for the weekends is worth two hundred grand, and somebody bebops in and says, "I'll give you four fifty. I, I get it. I mean, unless it's a family home with a million memories and we can't sell it. But if it's just, well, fuck, we could go buy a better house if we take the evil lady's money, right? Well, this article was written. Ten years ago, I was cruising around a ranch outside of Sheridan, Wyoming, sipping midday Coors Lights with two buddies and a Sam Elliott figure named Hardy who happened to be an honest, good, good cowboy. At one point, Hardy was an old family friend to one of those guys, gestured towards the rolling Bighorn Mountains and started rattling off surnames. Estee Lauder family owns that one. He's pointing to a mountain. Hewlett Packard family owns that one. Different mountains. Like, they own the whole mountain. mountain. Yeah. Wow. Um, he, he said it, so on and so forth. It seemed to make perfect sense. Of course the heirs to a cosmetics dynasty on vacation acreage so vast it envelops an entire mountain. Of course they would own that with... <laughs> It's uh, right. What do the makeup people? Right. But right. Ever. Whatever. With wealth uh, ostensibly infinite, that's ostensibly infinite. These families can do and pluck up parcels with impunity, creating their own self-isolating playgrounds 
as if it's the natural order of things. The Emerson family, which is lumber, I don't know, John Malone, cable TV, and Ted Turner, e- each own in excess of 2 million acres. 2 million. 2 million. Oh, my God. My friend Drew, I won't say who he went with, but he went to one of these exclusive Montana he has I don't know it's a thing like you snow ski or you golf depending on what it is but it's you know it's very 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 exclusive and Drew's just a normal guy and he's like if I had to hear it one more fucking time Ted Turner owns that Ted Turner owns that Ted Turner owns that I give a shit who owns this stuff why are they so impressive Ted Turner I go I don't know Drew I guess that's what rich people talk about right so um Kathy Carve Cargill is stupefyingly rich uh, it's the largest private company in the United States. I did not know that. She has a collection of McLaren sports cars. Well, she, wow, what is your problem, baby cat? Um, so the locals um, started to realize she's buying up all these homes, and it's her. But I don't know how they figured that out. Um, she said um, uh, there was an article in one of the papers up in Minnesota and the DNT article featured a Chargill charm offensive where she threatened to sue the hometown newspaper and stated, oh the homes we bought were pieces of crap. I couldn't oh. imagine in living in any of them. Wow. Unsurprisingly, locals had some concern. Why the hell is this seemingly hostile? What the hell is this seemingly hostile lady up to? Well, she's not going to tell any of them. No. Um. She's really bad at you. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You're going to say hi to the people, and then you're not going to, you're going to, well, all right. She's not. You almost took out the whole thing. Well, go talk to a, your brother. Um, She's sick of me. Uh, somebody said, I think Kathy Gargo, they started out nice. She's a well-meaning lady. I have faith that they're going to do the right thing. No way it's going to be some McMansion. Okay, oh, okay. Dan O'Neill, I've got news for you. <laughs> Um, uh, they, the, they, they went on Facebook, the town, the town folk. Um, uh, she said she's not going to communicate with the city. And then she got super pissy because they kept saying, what are your plans? Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. They want to know. I do. They have the right to know. I don't know. I don't know how that works. If there's no HOA, I don't think. And HOAs, my sister and I always talk about it. An HOA, because there is one, and she's in one of those family subdivision deals. Uh, HOAs are only as good as they are enforceable. There's true. a shit ton of people that that's just go, true. I don't care. Fuck you. Yeah. Make me make me change it. And then that's, what are you going to do? Get lawyers? It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. And this is what. You never win. You never um, win. No, you don't. Uh, this is what. <laughs> <laughs> they said Ka- Cargo could could have dug couldn't have dug a deeper PR grave if she tried with quotes like this. She said, "I think an expression we all know: don't pee in your Cheerios." No, Kathy, I've never heard that. No, actually, don't piss where you eat. Maybe you eat. your Cheerios, specifically yeah. Cheerios. <laughs> I would have said Honey Nut Cheerios because those are way better. Oh she God. said, "Well, uh, Mayor, the Mayor Reinhardt." kind of peed in his Cheerios right there, and definitely I'm not going to do anything to benefit the community. You know, yep. She said, um, the good plans I had for beautifying, um, updating and fixing up Park Point or putting up that sports complex, you can forget it. You're oh. not getting pickleball courts. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. They can posture all they want, but they aren't going. I'm not going anywhere. These people can't run me out. How neighborly. Um, <laughs> I don't know. And then I, there's another one. So that's the Cargill lady. And then there's a there's a tech billionaire quiet, c- quietly buying up Hawaii. Yes. Not yeah. not uh, Zuckerberg. Nope. Not even him. Nope. A different guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Waimea, Hawaii. Um, yeah, it's awful. Yeah, it's on the big island. Um, it's primarily an agricultural town with just three stoplights. And, and around 10,000 residents, it has lush forests with guava trees and torch ginger. I don't know what that is. What is that? I don't know. Hmm. Um, it's the birthplace for the Hawaiian cowboy or a panel. I can't say. Okay. Um, last couple of years, a mystery has been brewing in a small mountain town. Someone's been quietly buying up hundreds of acres of land, stirring worries about rising house prices. Yeah, 
That's yeah. yeah. Go to Lanai. You want to see their end result? That's that Larry Ellison. Ellison. You want to see the end result of it? And then you just have to hope. Did we get a good king or a bad, a bad king? king? Like it's bullshit. I just don't know how you. Um, how do you? St- this guy's the CEO and co-founder of San Francisco-based Salesforce, one of the largest software companies, uh, which owns the popular messaging service Slack. Never heard of it. It ain't no. that popular. <laughs> it's worth n- nearly three hundred billion. Stop. Billion. Stop. He also owns Time Magazine. Well, oh. guess what? You need to update that. Yeah. Because I haven't read Time since my grandpa was alive. I didn't know Time was still. Time. I didn't before. know it was still a magazine no. either. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. No. God, he's six foot five. His his, his name is Beanoff. He's fifty nine years old. I mean, he could live another 20 years. Yeah. He already has a beachside mansion. He built a $24 million, uh, 10,000 square foot home about 20 years ago and bought dozens of acres of ranch land in Waimea around that time, according to public records. He's gotten much, much larger during the pandemic. He's gone on a shopping spree. This will ruin the locals. Yeah. And nobody stops it. I don't get it. No. Uh, European countries have laws on this shit. We don't. No. It's a free for all. Mm-hmm. Update! Moving on. That's my anger section. Um, my anger section. Here's my happy news. Colorado's first Bucky's opened its doors in Texas Yay! with Texas brisket, beaver nuggets, and super clean restrooms. Nice. I'm going to tell you where it's at, Colorado. Um, oh, it had a big crowd at 6 a.m. on a Monday. Uh, You'd be uh, oh, of course I'll go. Um, I don't have a clue. They have the actual location. I'll have to go look that up. But guess who went in a Bucky's and posted a big video? Lenny Kravitz. That was so fun. It was great. And yeah. he signed, he signed stuff. He took pic- pictures with everybody. He got to meet Bucky. Oh. Bucky was also at the CMT Awards. Was he really? Yep. Yep. Oh, the, wow. the Bucky was there. Um, God, look at all my updates. Um, it's been a while. I know. Yeah. Update. <laughs> the Tropicana has officially closed. So sad. The Tropicana is where I realized Louis Black was mentally unstable. Uh, I was talking a little about there used to be a club on the second floor called Comedy Stop at the Drop. It mm-hmm. then turned into the Laugh Factory, and I was already out of the clubs by the time it turned into the Laugh Factory. But I spent put many, many hours clocked in at the Comedy Stop at the Drop and had a blast doing it. One time, Lou and I got drunk and gambled a bunch, and we walked across the street to the Drop to another casino and mm-hmm. played blackjack till I don't know, till morning yeah. sun. But we came out in the morning, it was snowing. And we were drunk, and it made no sense. And I'm like, we just need to go back in the casino. This right. is not. This is right like the now. end of the world yep. or something else. It's also where the Tropicana is where the only time in my life I got to see Mike Tyson mm-hmm. because on the second floor of the Trap, uh-huh. there were high-end retail stores and the comedy club. That was what was up there, but there was oh. a fur shop. And I was in the club. I, I don't remember. It must have been in between shows because I wasn't on stage. And they were like, Tyson's here, Tyson's here. And all of us were like, what? Oh no, I want to see him, I want to see him. So he came in in a fur, mm-hmm. this floor to, to head length fur yeah. coat, which he's already like a box that mm-hmm. just moves forward. Yeah. And then he became even boxier. And he had a bunch of guys with him. And they went in and they walked out with like four giant fur coats in those fancy bag, whatever mm-hmm. those are called. So that was very Fire exciting. Bags. Garment bags, right? I can't think of it. Uh, Lewis and I were gambling one night, playing video poker. And he said, we need to move. And I said, why? He goes, they can see us. I said, who can see us, Lewis? Because we weren't winning. He said, the people that watch this. I said, do you honestly believe that there's a person in in a camera in the sky? Mm -hmm. I mean, they had cameras then, but that you think they're studying you and I? Just me and, or is it everyone? I'm trying to understand what kind of psychosis we're dealing with here. (laughs) He goes, well, I I don't know. I don't know how many people they're keeping an eye on, but they're watching us. So what we need to do, Kathleen, is we need to find machines that are out of the camera view. I said, okay, Lou, where do you think the camera has its range to? What's the range? He goes, I know where, I know where we're going. Well, there was a hallway. (laughs) Wow. Okay. 
We weren't even drunk. This is just his psychotic. No, 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 we'd had maybe a whiskey or something. So there used to be this long hallway. It was like a promenade type thing Mm -hmm. in the trop. The whole thing of the Tropicana, the theme was exotic, like a a rainforest. Mm -hmm. And it had live macaws in cages, a lot of them, like maybe 10 on each side as you Mm -hmm. walk down this thing. But they would also have like one video poker machine or one slot machine in between the cages of the birds. And then you just hear a bird all night? Yeah. Oh. Lou's like, well, we got to go to the birds. I said, well, if any, if there's any cameras, it's probably where the birds are because they need to keep an eye on the birds. Right. No, they don't care about the birds, Kathleen. They don't care about the birds and there's no cameras there. Oh. So we go down this hallway. I sit at one video poker machine. He goes like, then there's a slot machine. He doesn't want to play that. He goes down there and I'm like, oh, yeah. Here's these birds going, deal, deal. They're repeating words they hear from the casino. <laughs> hit me, hit me. And I'm I'm staring at a fucking wall playing video <laughs> poker with a bird going, hit me, hit me. And I'm like, Lou, this is so fun. How, how are you doing down there? I have to scream. Like, you're supposed to gamble with your friend next right. to you and you go, oh, look, I got three aces. Or mm-hmm. he's like, just, I know it's not fun, but this is how we win. And I go, then we go back to fun where we're going to lose. Is that what you're saying? (laughs) Well, yeah, you can't lose the whole time. I'm like, wow, dude, I thought I had a gambling problem. You have just surpassed everything. Hit me. Hit me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So they sold off everything. And then sadly, there's feral cats that live out that live outdoors at the Tropicana. And the employees have fed them for like 10 years because out by their pool area, their pool area was super cool at the time. It was like like giant uh, rocks and waterfalls. It was like cool. like you just went to Jamaica, but oh, not fun. really. It was the first swim up blackjack I had ever seen. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, it was fun back in the day. But uh, I I did see cats out there now that they mentioned that. I was like, oh, well, why wouldn't you want to be a cat here? Right. If somebody feeds you, it's a wonderful place. Yeah. You're right by the pool. There's misty, It's so it's not so hot. Well, there, there's a bunch of employees trying to... Um, go save them before they put a giant fence around it. Oh, wow. Yeah, because then who's going to feed them? I need my friend Ron Thomas to go deal with this. Yep. He feeds all the homeless cats in Los Angeles every night of his life. All of them. Really? All of them. Okay. And he gets them neutered and spayed. And then he goes and finds rich people to give them money to do that. Where do they live? Well, he they're, makes a good living. He's a realtor. Forever feral? They're forever feral, but they're spayed and neutered, and then they won't, you know, maybe control the cat population. And That's maybe, nice. yeah, yeah, it's great. And then even more sad, <sighs> Margaritaville is closing on the strip in Las Vegas. So sad. I tried to tell you guys on this, that was my best secret bar. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm a Margaritaville fan. I'm, I'm not a fan per se. Like I'm not a Jim Buffett. What do they call What do they call Paradise. Paradise, right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like him. He's fine. But that, he's also dead. it's right in the middmiddle of the strip. He's also dead, yes. Yeah. yeah that's sad. Yeah. Um, but right across from the Mirage, there was Margaritaville, and if you went inside, you could walk up to the second floor, and there was just an outdoor bar up there, just beers, and I mean, yeah. just a regular bar, and you could just sit and watch the whole strip go by, and it was wonderful. Like, nobody knew about it, no. and anyway, that's closing. Sad times. Sucks. Yeah, the new stuff ain't as good, because uh, this was super casual. Yeah. Beers were cheap. Yeah. You know. Good breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, you could get breakfast up there. Yeah. Um, all right, we're moving on. Holy to holy shit. Oh, wait, no, I have to talk what we're watching because yeah. I'll forget it. The One of the greatest shows I've ever seen. It's called The New Look. It's on Apple TV. Yeah. It's about Coco Ch- Chanel. And I don't, I don't usually care about fashion, but I do care about people that exceeded in their area of work. And Christian Dior, mm-hmm. I told Louis, it has fashion, World War II, Nazis, and traitors. I don't think you get a better lineup for me no. as far as the things I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. The, so it's their behavior during World War II. Mm-hmm. Christian Dior, A plus on his behavior. Mm-hmm. Coco Chanel, a little questionable. F, mm-hmm. F, fail. Collaborated with the Nazis, dealt with the Nazis, was partying with the Nazis. Who knew? Yeah. I don't even know how yeah. Chanel Number no. Five survived all that. Well, maybe you go out, which is a movie, but it's ten episodes, and it was just. Phenomenal. Yeah. The acting is phenomenal. Glenn Close appears in it at one point. Yeah, she's great. And then the rest of them I didn't even know. The lady who plays Coco Chanel is a French actress. I thought it was Julie or- Ormond. She looks just like her. They yeah. look very much alike. Um, John Malkovic yes. plays Yves Saint Laurent. Yeah, he's 
Yeah, he was great. Um, really great. I could watch the whole thing over again. So that's my, what are we watching? And then you've got the basketball was great. The women's was great. The women Did got more bracket? than the men. No, I didn't win my bracket. I only won one square or two of the other thing. The squares are different than the bracket. Yeah. And the squares, I won one like in round one. That's worth like 25 bucks. Yeah, that's Cost you, 50 to enter. Yeah, you lost. I lost. You lost. Yeah. Loser. Holy shit, they found it. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> Elaborate 600-year-old castle complete with moat unearthed in France. Oh, wow. Yep. Archaeologists have known for years that a hotel in Vannes, France, was built on the site of a medieval castle. The 18th century mansion turned hotel even named itself after the castle. Chateau de Le Hermine. Hermine? Huh. While archaeologists didn't know how much of the 600-year-old castle was still around, buried just below the surface, ex excavations in the courtyard began in February 2023 ahead of the construction of a museum. Um, about 10 feet down, they found the top of the castle ruins, an elaborate stone structure that was built in the 1380s by the oh Duke of Brittany to show, showcase his power. Wow. What remained of the castle was a testament to its elegance and significance. We'll put this in the note, so you got to see the pictures. Um, That's cool. Here are the most um, eye-catching... Uh, oh, wait, wait, no. Two floors of the structure had been partially preserved. The larger ground floor stretched almost 140 feet in length and 55 feet in width. It had a moat, which could only be crossed via a wooden, wooden bridge. Um, they have an ancient stone pier and That's fragments crazy. of the bridge. Right. It's it's fantastic. Like, yeah. let's get this going. Um, the castle ruin had indoor toilets. Wow. In 1380. Wow. Drainage pipes. The arrangement of pipes suggests the castle originally had three or four floors. Oh. On another side of the ancient building, they found the uh, remnants of an integrated water-powered mill. Steps <laughs> leading to the mill and the tetra -sh block shaped hole where the wheel once spun. So they had a water mill. I mean, these guys were on it That's crazy. for 1380 mm -hmm. indoor plumbing. Mm -hmm. Christ in America, people didn't, some people didn't even get it till the fifties, nope. 1950s. 1950s. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they found all kinds of little stuff, knives and all kinds of crazy shit. That's I would good. love to go work on that. That's what I'm going to do when I'm retired. retired. Well, I'm going to go, go back to uh, Butler university cause he'll mm -hmm. let me come. Yeah. yeah. He can't, Jim. They, Jim, Jim's going to mm -hmm. let me come. Mm -hmm. uh, and his wife, Bethany, also sent me a Butler sweatshirt. And now I'm a Butler loyalist because so far, University of Missouri, SIU, I haven't seen any free clothing. <laughs> and Jim didn't send me the cheap shit. It's no. the good shit. It's nice. the shit in the bookstore where you're like, ooh, that's for your parents. <laughs> you know, it's not for the kids. Yeah, you're like, $170? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't no, and then I just go by, by myself, some teacher with a giant bulldog screaming something. Uh, moving on to news. <laughs> moving on to news. Very exciting paddles. This one's for you. Yay. One of the world's largest grizzly bears, a.k.a. named the boss. The boss. Yay. He's awake. Wow. Yep. That's some lady so took his picture. He's so old. Albertans are rushing to catch. He lives in Banff National Park, if you've never seen him. Uh, I bought Lewis, the boss, T-shirt, super classy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a tourist T-shirt. No. It's just a picture of a grizzly bear. It's a, it's like a black shirt, mm -hmm. a gray grizzly bear. It's, fancy. He's, it's a fancy tourist shirt, and mm -hmm. it just says the boss. And it mm -hmm. was like $56. Canadian. Canadian, true. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought I stole these glasses from him two years ago, <laughs> and he told me they were $75. They're and so I said, who old. the fuck spends $75 on reading glasses? Right. They're at Walgreens for five. They're and he was like, well, I just thought they looked nice. And I was like, well, I lost my glasses, and I have to go do a TV show. So, And then I just took them, and I never gave them back. Oh, he yeah. doesn't need reading glasses. He has glasses. He wears glasses all the time. You don't need it. I wear contacts. I need them. Anyway. The boss. The boss. Mm -hmm. um, he's awake. Now, here's the thing. He is super old for a grizzly. Mm -hmm. Grizzlies usually live to about 20. I yeah. Googled all this. Mm -hmm. uh, 20 to 25 max. He, they think he's about 27. So, crazy. so every spring he comes out, I'm happy he's still alive. Yeah. Um, he's emerged from hibernation. <laughs> uh, he's officially known as bear number 122. Yep. He's already been spotted dozens of times this spring. Chances are you've seen recent photos and videos of him. Uh, this is guarding mixed reactions. And the bear safety experts cautioning people to keep their distance. He weighs six, up, 
upwards of 650 pounds. He's the most dominant grizzly bear in and around, but he's e- already eaten a black bear, and he's been hit by a train a couple times. Mm-hmm. No problem. Nope. Doesn't care. Nope. You go ahead and hit my fat ass. I'm going <laughs> to... Um, he's got kids. After two years of search- searching, Tasha Barnett of Bear Bearberry... Uh, I don't know where... It's actually called Bearberry. Finally saw him earlier this week on the railway tracks eating grain that had fallen from a train. See, that's why he hangs out by the train tracks. Yep. Food. Shit falls off. He should go downtown. Yes. Go to the Rosen Crown. Go to the back of the Rosen Crown. Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. Of, that's my favorite bar there. So good. Uh, the poutine there is to die for. So and uh, just wait for them to take the trash out at night. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I've ever seen a better looking bear, and I've seen a few bears. It was just incredible. Sobering feeling to see him just doing his own thing. She had driven two hours in the hopes of spotting him. How did she know it was the boss and not just any other grizzly? There are telltale size signs. His massive size, he's missing a chunk of his right ear, and his sh- uh, shorter snout. There's not a lot of bears that look like him. No. Um, she was, what, one of the dozen people. But then they're saying, the thing is, he's going to start getting irritated mm-hmm. with hey, man, I'm just trying to eat lunch here on a train track. I don't need all this shit. And then what if he attacks somebody? Then they'll kill him. It's so, yeah. It's not Um, very kind to the bear. No. No. At least keep your distance, you know. Yeah. But he's out. And when he sits down and plays in the snow, he actually looks extremely cute. He's very cute. Yeah, until you get up close and then he eats your face off. And he eats you. Yeah. All bears Um, will eat you. All bears will eat you. Mm Mm-hmm. Speaking of wildlife, uh, the first possible wolf pack sighting in Nevada in over 100 years. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Well, not cool if you're a farmer. Bad. There's a lot of um, debates on all this. I'm not getting involved. No. I'm just reporting the news. Mm-hmm. Stage wildlife managers reported a possible wolf pack sighting for the first time in, in, our, over, in, in over 100 years. A helicopter crew is conducting an aerial moose survey when they spotted three suspected wolves traveling together in north, northeast Nevada near Merritt Mountain. North of Elko, wild, wildlife biologists are now working with the U.S. to confirm it. And then they have a picture of a wolf. And ooh, ooh, He's cute. They're but crazy. Yeah. Um, they're trying to, but they're trying to figure out why the wolf. I, I, I have a tough time with that there's moose in Nevada. I just think of Vegas. I know Reno and Tahoe. That's all up there, that. up there, up in the mm-hmm. mountains. Yeah. Um, the wolves are making a comeback. And I'm sure there, I know there's a lot of farmers upset about that, and I don't know how that all works out, but that's what's happening now. There's a wolf pack. <laughs> right. um, Sorry. Speaking of castles, which I was speaking of a moment ago, mm-hmm. I should have put this story by that story, and I didn't. Uh, so one time, uh, me, I don't remember who, I don't know. I remember me and my dad. Mm-hmm. and my, I think my, my mom was there for sure, mm-hmm. and maybe, I don't know who else. We were somewhere in Ireland in a back ass road, and there was this old castle. And my dad has a problem with the British coming over eight hundred years ago and stealing all of our things. Right. Well, many Irish. He's do. he's he's still stuck on that. <laughs> we're not getting off that. Sorry. And we go in a castle that at one time was an Irish castle, uh-huh. and then eight hundred years ago, some British uh, duke got assigned it by uh-huh. Henry the Eighth or whomever the hell, and uh, Henry the First, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh. And um, then they owned it. Well, we go in this, it is a dilapidated ass castle, but we want to see it. It says it's open. So we, and it is in bumfuck. It's not like the Blarneys don't, no, no, right. this is off some beaten path. And we go in and there's there's a portrait of a, a very, very, very old man on an oil, one of those giant oil paintings. And then there's a man taking like five, 10 bucks per person mm-hmm. sitting at the table. Mm-hmm. Who does look an awful lot like the guy in the painting, mm-hmm. just maybe a hundred years difference, maybe more than that, maybe a couple hundred years different. Mm-hmm. And my dad goes, Oh, he said to the guy, he goes, Is that your is that your grandpa up there? And he goes, uh, no, it's actually my great great grandfather. He goes, Oh, and you need my five bucks. How far the mighty have fallen. Oh, oh! Mic drop. Yep. I'm like, Dad, we don't have to get in a political fight here. Okay. We just want to tour a castle. I feel sorry for the guy. Uh-huh. He didn't start all this shit and he's probably going to be the one to finish it because he he's clearly has no money. This no. place is a dump and he's only he's charging. He could charge us 10 bucks. I'd pay it. Whatever he was, whatever he charged, I would have paid more. Right. But whatever. Well, King Charles is opening Balmora. Oh, 
Balmoral Castle where the queen died to tours. First of all, I don't know how many people would be up this way in Scotland. I believe it's pretty far north. Um, He's going to be opening Balmoral Castle, his mother's favorite home, and the place where she passed away to visitors. So it's going to be very limited, though. Now, you can go there right now, but you can only tour the grounds in, like, a room or two, mm-hmm. right? Well, it will be the first time such a tour has been offered since the castle was completed in 1855. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, on the uh, Balmoral Castle internal guided tour, visitors will be reportedly be escorted ten at a time by a guide through two dining rooms, the drawing room, the pages lobby, and the red corridor, all without ropes or barriers. Um only 40 people will be permitted to attend each day from July 1st to August 4th, after which King Charles and Queen Camilla will return for the rest of the summer. Oh, thank God. Oh, well, we can't have people parading through here no, trying to no. relax. I how, feel how am I supposed to have any fun if half the castle has the pedestrians? In it? <laughs> um, like the White House. Up until now, you've only been permitted to see exteriors, gardens, and the ballroom of the castle, not actually a castle, but an estate house, which was given to the Queen Victoria by Prince Albert while construction was underway. It's, it's still in 1852. The Queen decided she wanted to die there. It's located west of Aberdeen, Scotland. Um, Charles is in charge now. And then it's 100 bucks. Well, 100 euros. Yeah. What? Uh, Holy shit. It's private. That's expensive. Well, it is expensive. Yeah, that's not- Hundred bucks, and it's another fifty if you want afternoon tea. Well, you spelled tea wrong. It's W H I S K E Y. <laughs> now, if there was afternoon whiskey, I will give you fifty more dollars. Right. Tea, a I wouldn't pay for it ever. No. Hate it. Don't get it. Right. Don't understand it. And then Lou would be on a rampage about. I just want unsweetened iced tea. <laughs> is, is everything sweetened? Huh. Is it? Don't they have normal iced tea anywhere? No, he hates the- I don't. He's hard to take on vacation in the South or the Midwest. They like sweetened tea. Or Canada. Or Canada, right? Yeah, he, yeah, he went God, crazy. I'm so mad about our yeah. Tea. Have um, a beer, Luke. Shut up. Uh, this tour season is a trial run. King Charles is apparently open. <laughs> Has it in mind to open the castle on a regular basis in the future? Uh, yeah. So there you go. If you want to go to Balmoral? Get a, get on it. Get There's on only it. 40 yeah. people a day allowed. Um, here's a little news from Tennessee. We're thinking about not committing to the idea, just thinking about banning marriages between first cousins. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the reason they used to have to do that oh is because normal people didn't have educations and they didn't understand science. And then they didn't understand why their kids had problems when you had it with your first cousin. Right. Then science came along, and you would think we wouldn't have to mandate this shit anymore, but clearly we for, do. I'm proud of you for knowing that. People weren't, didn't have access to anything science, but the Bible. Science things. Science things. Yeah, it's a science thing. It's a science thing. Good for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good for you. Good for me. Yeah. Sometimes when my lack of science knowledge, I really do wonder how I was allowed out of any school, starting in grade school. I don't know how I made it out of that. High school? No idea. Um, a Tennessee lawmaker has filed a bill that would ban marriage re- ma- marriages between first cousins in the volunteer state. So stupid. Uh, yeah, well, but here's what's even more surprising. Oh We're thinking about it. He introduced the bill. Tennessee's not the only state what? where it's fine to marry your first cousin. It's got to be Mississippi. It's shocking. No. It's not what I would think. No. Nope. Here's no where, offense, here's Tennessee. where it's legal. Arkansas. So if you think your first cousin is super hot... <laughs> You need to get to one of these states. Mm. California. Oh, my God. Uh, I know. Wow. Alaska. Wow. Oh, yeah, know. There's not enough people. No. Maybe you do got to marry a cousin. It's not your fault. And maybe he's the funniest or the yeah. cutest or whatever. Shit. Texas. <laughs> Tennessee. <laughs> it's legal. Alabama. Uh-huh. Virginia. Well. Eh, it's mm-hmm. still the South-ish. North Carolina, South Carolina. Georgia. Jesus. Florida. New York. I thought they knew better. (laughs) Maybe nobody's doing it. I don't know. Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Maryland, and the District of Columbia. So don't say that I'm not doing the work of the Lord and this podcast isn't isn't teaching you things. If you have the hots for your first cousin, I just told you where to go. (laughs) Yep. Go ahead. Have kids. 
whatever. See how long, see how, see how, see how that works out for y'all. Um, this was sent by my research assistant, Bob Reed, um, also a Los Angeles producer. That's his real job. Um, now, uh, now 99 cent stores are not, uh, everywhere. Um, well, it's Bob and Clark. Yeah, it's always Bob and Clark. They're, they're like a, a unit. One thing they come as a pair, they come as their salt and pepper checker. They come as a, they come as a thing. You can't just buy one. Now all 99 cent stores. I've seen a million in my life, but I didn't realize that I was mostly only seeing them out West. Yeah, I yeah. thought they were everywhere. That's I thought Missouri had them. Yeah. I don't know. I also get confused though. Dollar general, dollar store, There's a lot of dollar things. Dollar, and you know what? Here's the biggest nightmare. I took the twins when they were like, "What age is it where you don't really know math?" Seven. Well, for you. Well, for me, I don't know it now. It's it's fifties in your fifties. Yeah. Now they were like seven, seven. Yeah. and they had like five dollars a piece, mm -hmm. and they went out at a dollar store. The conversations, especially, I can't do math either. Don't come to Aunt Cat <laughs> with a math question. You need to go find your mother for that because I can't. So, Cat, I have. Emily, really, she was like, okay, so I have like eight things and I have $2. I'm like, well, we have a problem. I have a credit card. That means uh, for you, if you, I'll buy it all for you because mm -hmm. that's what I'm, I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I'm the aunt that has extra money, mm -hmm. but I might get in trouble by your mom. She's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but like, can I get more? And I'm like, you don't have enough money for the things you do. These <laughs> these conversations went on, and they're just handing me crumpled dollar bills. Uh, right. And Emily never has money. Claire's, but Claire always has some money. Right. Um, but it, that's an excruciating. That's yeah. Anyway, 99 cent stores announced Tuesday will begin to or, an order, orderly wind down of operations. Oh orderly. The company will use Hilco Global to liquidate all merchandise owned by the company and dispose of certain fixtures, furniture. And equipment at its stores. The liquidation sales should begin on Friday, April 5th at all stores. Um, wow. Yep. I, I didn't know this. I thought they were. Um, I Googled it. Oh, Google. Will you Google Paddles? Where are 99 cent stores located? Why have I seen so many in my life? It's weird. California, Texas, Arizona, Nevada. California, Texas, Arizona, Nevada. Maybe Texas. I'm thinking probably Houston. I've seen a shit ton. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Um, hold on. Okay. All right. This is a happy little story. And then I have another happy story. Mm -hmm. And then I have um, uh, some thank yous and a tay tay and a dolly quote for okay. you. The oldest, there's a new oldest man in the world. He says the secret to longevity is luck plus regular fish and chips. The oldest man says the secret is luck, moderation, and fish and chips every Friday. He has fish and chips every Friday. Englishman John Alfred Tinniswood mm -hmm. is 111. Oh. He's been, yeah, he looks great. He's sitting here in a little shirt and a chair, and he's got a little uh, sweater vest on. Cool. He does not look 111. I'd say uh, 90. Really? Yeah, he looks good. Cool. Especially, you know, white skin doesn't do that good with time. Um, wow. We usually crack up at about, well, my age. Yeah. We're cute as babies. And then it just goes south. You get a lot of marriage proposals. Yeah, I do get a lot of marriage yeah. proposals. And I can tell a lot of those men are, are old because they always want to <laughs> take me out for a, quote, proper steak dinner. Proper. I'm like, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Tennis Wood was presented with a certificate by Guinness World of Records on Thursday at, at the care home where he lives in Southport, Northwest England. He was born August 26, 1912, a few months after the sinking of the Titanic. Whoa. <laughs> He lived through two world wars, serving in the British Army Pay Corps in World War II. I don't know what that is. He's a retired accountant, great grandfather. He never smokes, rarely drinks, and follows no special diet apart from fish and chip supper once a week. If you drink too much or eat too much, you walk or you walk too much. If you do anything too much, you're going to suffer eventually. Ultimately, though, it's pure luck. You either live long or you live short. You can't do much about it. The oldest. Uh, woman in the world and the oldest living person is 117 year old Maria Branis Moyer uh, of Spain. And she's wow. on Twitter. She's the one I follow on Twitter. Right. Right. Still I refuse to call it X. Um, okay. This, this, this story made me laugh. I'm going to save these for next week. Next week, I'm going to go over some celebrity writers. Mm -hmm. 
the, the writer, meaning your contract of what you require backstage, mm-hmm. in case you don't know what that inside baseball talk means. And I, I got to really up my writer. What does yours say now? Mine says um, Diet Coke, uh, light beer, mm-hmm. like six, so the opener can mm-hmm. have some, and if Paddles wants some. It's like two beers a piece, mm-hmm. whoever. Um, water. <laughs> That's some water? Just, <laughs> some water. Okay. That's to take on stage. Mm-hmm. The one beer before the show, one beer after the show. And then if, if there's a beer monster like Michael Somerville or Michael Palastak, that I get them their own six pack because mm-hmm. they just need to stay away from my big ultras. <laughs> just stay away. But I mean, some of the shit, I, I can't even, no but it's fun to read. Yeah. Um, this made me laugh because this, this is the kind of thing I would so look forward to. More than even like a St. Pat's Day. There's an Ir- old Irish festival oh boy. <laughs> that crowns a goat king each year. Stop it. Yes. Oh! And it's a mountain goat with the big horns, the, oh, yeah. the, the crazy horns. Yep. The festival is held from August 10th to 12th each year and attracts visitors from near and far hoping to take part in the royal festivities. On day one, known as the Gathering, a wild male goat found in the nearby wilderness is crowned for the duration of the festivities by Queen Puck, a young girl from the town. Fair day follows on day two with a cattle fair uh, held while King Puck observes from his regal scaffold. (laughs) The goat watches the cattle. It It comes to an end, as all good things must, with the scattering on day three. When Uh, King Puck is returned to the wilderness and presumably tells his fellow goats the strangest story they've ever heard. <laughs> uh, that's great. I like it. Um, <laughs> so let me see my shout outs. Uh, uh, oh, Mike sent some damn it dolls. This is one of them. Yeah. They're fun. Yeah, they are fun. Yeah, I'm um, that one. yeah it's a damn it doll. I'd, I'd heard of them, but I'd never see one. You're supposed to slam it against things. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. It's to get the anger out. I'm going to do this every time one of the doctors walks into my dad's room. Is this annoying? Is this bothering you? Yep. Would you have any answers? Do you have any information? So far, everything you've said, I could have heard on Bourbon Street from a tarot card reader. What else you got? Um, Cammy, oh, so the Cicada kick, a Cookbook, which I'm never going to eat the cicadas, but I do like the idea that they have a cookbook because there's going to be a trillion in a large part of the United States, and everybody might want to get on what are you going to do with them all. I'm just going to watch a cat eat them. Eat them. Um, Aiden sent me some bear, hair brew bears, great, and uh, to get me through the summer. So, yeah. yeah, on my airplane rides, which will be plentiful. Plentiful. Mm-hmm. Let's get it. Let's get it. Tay Tay and then a Dolly quote. Let's start with Tay Tay. She's busy again. She was spotted in Los Angeles filming a video. You know what? I'm always amazed. Where are videos still being played? On your phone, Grandma. On my phone, Grandma. Yeah. Right, but. Oh, you mean the children want to yes, see the video? Yes. Oh. Okay. Are you saying you don't want to do a video? Ever? I just think they're, I think videos are just passe. Why spend all that money and shit? Because somebody else is paying for it. Because someone else is paying for it? Well, yeah. why, why right. spend their money? Right, right, baby cat? I just think videos are dumb. I don't know. You're doing a video right now. Well, this is not a music video. <laughs> music videos. I don't. I don't know. Maybe the children like them. I mean, they when they were new, it was something new. But now it's like, I mean, there's a reason MTV and VH1 don't really show videos anymore. No, those those hardly exist. Well, MTV is still very popular with the children. Very much so. However, I don't know about VH1. I haven't heard about that. Put it on your phone. If you you can, if you go into Apple Music, you can click and watch the video. All right. We'll take this offline. Um. Snoop's not doing videos. Jelly Roll's doing videos? Jelly Roll has to do videos because technically he's in the country music genre and CMT plays videos all day long. (laughs) Sometimes I feel like the videos on CMT, the ones I've seen, uh, because sometimes if I go get my nails done um, at the the place, they have that and Chive TV, which I could live on Chive TV. Um, If you want to get my attention, say something on Chive TV. But... The CMT videos, they're just oversimplistic. Like, they just actually act out the song. Yeah. I'd like it to be a little less blatant. Literal? Yeah, it's very literal. And I'm a literal person. I usually, I usually tend to go for that. But 
I don't know. Um, Tay-Tay said in March of 2019 to Elle magazine, we have to live bravely in order to truly feel alive. And that means not being ruled by our greatest fears. I think fears are healthy. Yeah, like when I say I'm afraid of snakes, people go, well, that's ridiculous. Or some, No, it's not. Pro, you know, half the snakes out there can probably kill you. You should yeah. be cautious and be, yeah. you should have fear of that. Right. Instead of like my friend Andrew, who will actively dive off the dock <laughs> to chase one like a fucking lunatic. I don't know if she's talking about those fears. Well, I don't know what she's yeah. talking about. No. She probably doesn't either. <laughs> Dolly Parton. Um, let's find a good one. Oh, I don't, this is, she said this, discussing her looks in 1982. I don't care how ugly I get as long as I'm healthy. I figure my best years are going to be between 50 and 100. Oh. Oh. Nice. <laughs> well, she's nailing it. She I mean, she's 78, and every day I got more things to say that she's either selling or thinking of or doing. Oh, or, oh I got um, your present. Your I, oh, I got a present. Yeah, a Dolly present. I'll show it next week. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can pick it up. So that's it, termites. I'll see you kids out on the road. You and watch, uh, the Masters? I'm going to watch every bit of the Masters that I can. Yes, every single bit, um, except Thursday it's supposed to rain a lot. Who do you like? Um, I like Scotty Scheffler. If his wife doesn't have a baby, that's kind of a hack choice. Everybody knows he's the best right now playing. Um, Who's your wild card? My wild card is Hideki. You love Hideki. I love Hideki. Oh. Hideki Matsuyama. <laughs> <laughs> he's, fuck, he's solid. He's cute. And bet him in the top ten. Golf is the easiest thing to bet on in the world. I tried to tell my friend Michael Somerville because he likes to gamble. I'm like, put, so for instance, I put the Yukon men would win by 10, mm -hmm. which they did, and then I parlayed that Hideki would finish in the top 10 in last weekend's Valspar tournament. Boom. That, now, if that would have been a, just a Yukon bet, the $100 would only paid 175 But because I put Hideki in there, and I bet you all those people at DraftKings are like, what crackhead just put this bet in? <laughs> Who put golf with with men's college basketball? This lady did, and this lady, boom, a hundred paid three eighty five. Nice. See, just oh. got a sneak. sneak. I like Hideki. Sneak Hideki. There's another guy, Wyndham Clark. Just remember, I said that he's been playing very good, mm -hmm. and uh, he won uh, last year the U.S. Open, yep. and he just won something else. He seems to be on a roll. His mom his mom was sick. She died. I think she passed away. Passed away with cancer. It's very sad. Um, he's a nice man. Um, I would bet all of my money. Rory will not win, but that's not an option on DraftKings. Sorry, love you, Rory, but this is just too big of a monkey on his back. Uh -huh. It's now the Masters monkey, and it's never going away. No. And they should make a Masters monkey. They should have, and it should be a green monkey. Yes, a green, oh, green yes, Masters yes, monkey. Yes, and he should be dressed like a caddy. <laughs> He should have a little white jumpsuit. Yeah. Yeah, and it should say MM for Master's Monkey. And McElroy on the back. Yeah. Whoa, when it says McElroy on the back. Yeah. And then you throw it to whoever loses the hole. Oh, wow. oh! oh People say golf can't be exciting. Come on, there's ideas laying on the table yeah. everywhere. <laughs> All right, termites. Uh, are, you about, are you excited about Detroit? I am very excited about Detroit. I'm never not excited about Detroit. I'm excited to see my friends up there that I haven't seen in forever. And um, I have my secret spots mm -hmm. that, I that I like to go to. and uh, But I won't be there for long. But uh, just a quick in and out. And then it's Terrytown. No, no. Yeah, yeah Terrytown in Wilmington, Delaware. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited at Terrytown because I did not know she liked comedy. And as a fan, Meredith Vieira will be coming. That's fun. It's very exciting. Oh. I've watched her my whole life on all kinds of millions of shows. I always forget that, like, I don't know. People that I've seen on TV also watch comedy. comedy? Yeah. There's, um, um, the Baby Cat baseball tees will be available next week. Oh, the Baby Cat baseball tees will be available yes. next week. That's very exciting. That's one thing you did do while you were in I did. The I vortex. did. <laughs> I, well, I call it the jackalope vortex. I mm -hmm. think I'm going to get things done, and then I don't. And then we, oh, my God. We watched. He wanted to watch it. And my sister and the twins were there, and they're, they're 15. The Quiet Man. With John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara, O'Hara, yeah. Amir Farah's mother, I don't know. Yeah. 
there's one scene where he just beats the shit out of a woman and then he drags her through town. Oh and yeah, and the, the girls were like, oh my God. Like, was this okay? Like, did people do this to you? Grandma, did people do this to you? And she's like, I'm not that old. I'm like, well, well, mom, kind of. And then one, as John Wayne's dragging her through this town in Ireland, this guy goes, here's a stick to hit her harder with. Oh my God. <laughs> If you go back and watch these things, and then we were watching like gun smoke. My dad never even liked gun smoke. Right. I don't think he wasn't a Western guy, like how we, except as, there was a show called Laramie. I've never, it's a channel 101. It's some old, it's all. I go, Do you know this show, Laramie? He goes, Yeah, it's right from the 40s when I was a kid. It was really popular. So I looked it up. He's 100% right. Like his brain is fine, which if you see a CAT scan of his brain, I don't even know how he's saying good morning. Right. I really don't know how any of that is happening, but it is. Um, but there was a the gun smoke ones. I guess it's gun smoke. I don't know what the show is. They're, they all look the same. There are about a, 10 times in the show where somebody will go, you shouldn't have done that, and just shoots them. I'm like, wow, just flat out murder. And then he goes into town and has a whiskey. They, like, they just, you don't even get in any fucking trouble. Hot I'm like, everywhere. wow, this, you know, people say now everything's so violent. And I'm like, look at this. We're dragging women through town. And right. the, 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 he's just, he just shot somebody because he Everyone's thinks he stole a horse. Everyone's I'm like, a horse. I thought, oh, my God, I hate cowboy western shit. I hate it. But he said, stop on that channel. And I, I thought, I'm going to hate this. And this is going to be for the next three hours. I'm going to have to see. I loved every minute of it. <laughs> and there's a, one, there's a very young Michael Landon. Um, I'm like, that's got to be Michael Landon. And it was. But um, to go back and watch those things just for the, what was culturally acceptable. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I asked for a whiskey five minutes ago. <laughs> now, do you have whiskey? <laughs> wow. Wow, wow. Let's try a lady through town and see if we can get an extra stick to hit her with. <laughs> And there was, this is where I was like, I wonder like how much my dad is 100% aware of or 50% aware. And my sister was there and we were watching one of those gun smokes and there was this blonde lady and two guys were fighting over her mm -hmm. and they were going to duel. They were going to, somebody was going to die over this woman. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't know why my dad just goes, she's not worth it. I said, I was just thinking the same thing. She's not even cute. No. And she just doesn't seem to have a personality. And she seems like a pain in the ass on top of it. She look at her outfits. This lady costs money. Right. Like, fuck it. Leave. Don't. Yeah. But just when it, she's not worth it. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. Wow. And he taught, he says he uh, sees dead people at night. And people always go, well, that's the sign of an end of life. No, he's been seeing them since last May. I think he runs out of people to talk to. Because he talks 24 hours a day. He never always did. But now it's even more. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like a big barking dog. I got another thought. I'm like, wow. Yeah, dad, dad, bring it down, bring it down. But I fed him 18 shakes. He is jacked up on sugar and yeah. milk caramel. and caramel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but for the record, just because your parent sees, has conversations with dead people. I said, oh, you said grandma, your mom was here? Yeah, she was here. I said, is, did she say anything? She's a little concerned. <laughs> well, okay, so are we. Uh, yeah, I guess Thanks, you clearly have said you're not going with her. No. Nope, <laughs> never. It's not happening. Take that argument down the street. Death is not an option. I need an attorney. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I always thought that, oh, if you saw dead people... That meant you were going to die. It was like a sign of delirium. No, no, I just think he's out of people to talk to, and he's having conversations of the ones he wants to have with them. Yeah. And that's that. Because my <laughs> sister got all nervous about it. I'm like, this has been going on since last May. He clearly has a good relationship with his mother. Talked to dad last <laughs> night. Oh, okay. And then I asked him about yeah. other people. And then, okay, so this is the last funny thing I'll say. Uh -huh. So my sister-in-law, Amy, who's a ton of fun, uh -huh. Amy cooks very healthy food, yeah. which is not necessarily um, <laughs> my dad's idea of good food. Like whenever, if, if Joe and Amy were hosting Thanksgiving, he's like, oh, Christ, I'm going to have to pre-eat. Oh, Jesus. My, Vicky, Vicky, can you make a real Thanksgiving dinner before we go over there? Well, so I have it for the week, you know. I mean, She's a he, great cook, though. 
Well, one time he's so, and he's so loud because he's always been deaf, but she had a quinoa salad. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, God, this won't float. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he, 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 she's got all the food laid out on the counter. And he's, he's in front of me in line with his plate. He goes, what's that shit? I go, salad. <laughs> I know that's weird to you. <laughs> he's like, bullshit. I don't even see any lettuce. Well, the one day I thought he wasn't necessarily 100% in his right mind, mm -hmm. so I do tests on him, mm -hmm. it, it, my own tests, since doctors don't seem to be coming. Um, I said, do you, want, do you want a McDonald's shake again? Mm -hmm. Yes. I said, do you want me to have Amy make you a salad? Mm -hmm. God, no! <laughs> no, 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 no. Like I had just said, I'm going to shove salad in your ears and mm. your eyeball. He was that against it. Anti-lettuce. But that I that he that is that he goes, I know what you're doing. Ha 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 ha. Oh. <laughs> okay. And I was trying to get a rise out of him. Yeah. I was trying to see if he was on if he's tracking. Are right. you saying yes to everything? Right. Is, is it because that's just the word that's flying in your head or are you mm. conscious of this conversation? Well clearly very conscious. God no. No, 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 nothing for me. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. You don't look very good. <laughs> well, this situation is staying different, but okay. All right, everything's good. Everything is good for now, termites. So <coughs> um, I will Here. see you out on the road. In Detroit. I still taste that perfume from those potato chips. Night, night, termites.